Good afternoon. The um, December 16th meeting of the Oklahoma City Water Utilities will be in order, and the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the December 2nd meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Are there comments or questions? Hearing none, voting please. Minutes are approved. Next item is the consent docket. Move the consent docket subject to individual consideration. Second. Motion and a second on the consent docket. Are there matters to be discussed separately? Hearing none, voting please. Consent docket's approved. Next item is the concurrence docket. Move One the item. Concurrence. Move the concurrence docket. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the concurrence docket. It's a change order on the Whitewater facility. Any comments or questions? Voting please. Consent dockets or concurrent dockets is approved. Next is uh, item five, which is emerging construction contract. The vote will have to be unanimous in order for it to be approved. Move approval. I have a motion and a second to approve the construction contract. Um, are there questions or comments? Thank you. This is a repair of a large sewer that had started to leak underneath it uh, as it was approaching a uh, creek crossing. So therefore it was it had the potential to deteriorate into a, a serious problem for the for the creek that it was crossing, a water quality problem. However, it was it was a moderate it was a moderate flow that wasn't doing any environmental damage at that time, but it, showed all signs of collapsing very soon, so we declared it an emergency to make certain that we protected the waterway. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, voting on the emergency contract. Contract's approved. Next item. Uh, next item is uh, uh, under item six is an amendment to the service contract with Veolia for water, and I need um, Someone to t take the chair for a moment while I recuse. Pat, would you mind? You would you mind chairing the meeting for? Carl's actually nice to talk to from there. Okay. This item for individual consideration. Is there a uh, motion? I second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Tell us about the status of the contract, Marsha, where we're where we're at in the process. How, what, well, how many years you. left? And the, this con we do an annual contract amendment to uh, uh, review the total cost of the project as described in the details of the contract. For uh, re renewals are based on uh, cost, essentially cost of service adjustments that are pre-described in the agreement. In in this case, this year we see a 3.8 percent. Increase, which is which is uh, high compared to recent years, and the reason for that is that we've implemented several new uh, wastewater treatment plant operations. So the cost of power has gone up to to handle those additional facilities. The cost for uh, odor control chemicals, which is very important to citizens near our facilities, has gone up. The cost of power uh, I mentioned the cost of power, and and there are more operations personnel present. Uh, normally, we get this contract to you a little earlier in the year, but it, but the complex nature of the changes that were made uh, provided for a lot of back and forth with the, with the contracts while you're seeing it at this late date. Okay. How many more years do they have? They have about two years, if I if I you go through 16? that correctly. We're, we're hiring someone just now to help us uh, put together uh, the proposals that, that we will seek. So this is a uh, professional services agreement, essentially. It's a very complex one. It's one of our largest contracts of its type, uh, we put together with the help of experts uh, requests for proposals for the services. Uh, we will look at a variety of additional services and pluses and minuses that will be considered by the potential contractors. There are several large firms who could do this work. It is typically limited to very large operations companies uh, because of the size of our operations. And it's four wastewater treatment plants, a very large pump station. Uh, there are many, many operations companies in the United States uh, operating small towns for them, but we're, we're in a kind of a different league. Not was that we'll exclude anyone. But. Was this a six or a seven year contract? 
said multiple years. I think this contract has been in operation since about 2003. Will this have an impact? It, it can. It, the price can go up and can go down. Um, the, so that's something that we try to plan for as we get ready for these contracts is to recognize in our funding set asides that uh, that the contract has the potential that we, we don't count on it being this price precisely. Um, I, I think in our favor, as we go forward, we made a lot of wastewater treatment plan improvements since the last contract, and I think that um, will serve us well as we as we go forward, regardless of who the operator is. <laughs> as usual, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? I don't have one of those buttons, so can you do it? Ready to vote? Approved. Yes, approved. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is uh, consideration of entering an executive session. I do think we do not need an executive That's session. Good. Is that right? Will we strike the item? I have a motion to strike and with a second voting, please. The matter is stricken. Next item is items from trustees. Pat. Mr. Chairman, I missed a question on one of the projects. We voted before I could find my notes. But on this project, it was uh, 3J about uh, we sent, uh, accepted an easement from the Burlington Northern across underneath their tracks. We're going to put a 48 inch line underneath there. Are we going to put in two 48 inch lines so we won't have, in case something happens to the first one? We won't have to renegotiate with the railroads. I'm so sorry. I believe this is a one of. One of. So we don't we don't have no redundancy here. If something goes in wrong, we have to contact the railroad. I, I, Councilman, don't ask me the question. I, I'm, I'm Are not we putting in multiple facilities to have some re degree of redundancy or of, of two? Uh, uh, provide for additional growth in the system? Yes, this does provide for additional growth in the system, but also the way the water system is gridded, even though it may not be coming under this railroad or parallel to the railroad, it, the water will be coming from another direction, uh, perhaps a few miles away. There are pipes that are gridded together that make it, that do back up this pipe as it comes through. Any other questions from trustees or comments? Hearing none, the next item is the uh, general manager reports or status report on the utilities department for the November. Marsha, are we pumping any water from McGee Creek to, uh, to Atoka? We are. We are consistently. Uh, we did see just a little bit of rainfall earlier this week in the southeast lakes. Uh, as, 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 they're saying Battery maybe some more by the end of the week. Yes, I, I'm expecting uh, more rain um, th through a series of several days. Um, the, we are two months in a row with water, with rainfall rates that are below the average for those months. Uh, as, as you know, it's Oklahoma, so those do vary. Uh, the lake levels are naturally lower at this time of year, and, and that continues to be the case. Meter sales, uh, we're reporting over 4% lower this year than last year, but last year's uh, period for, this, for the same number of months was a record-breaking all-time high number of total sales. So being at just under 2,000 meters at the end of November is, is what we would normally consider pretty good. Uh, happy to answer questions about operations. Lakes are at 52.25% available capacity today. No, no. There is there is a small amount of flow in the river, and we're, we are capturing it. Uh, but again, we're, what we're capturing is essentially what falls in the river. There's there's just very little runoff happening so far. Also, very normal for this time of year, unfortunately. Okay. Any other comments on the status report? 
Uh, next item is citizens be heard. There are a number of citizens have signed up. As I call your name, if you'd come forward to the microphone and state your name and your address, please, for the record, as you come forward. The first person is Tim Kirk. First out the box, could I hand you, uh, give you a handout? Sure. Please. Last time I was here in 1995, and it was for the same reason. It was an oil drilling company wanted to uh, set up an oil rig on the south shore of Lake Hefner. And uh, there's going to be a tele television is advertising. There's going to be a meeting on the uh, 6 o'clock on Thursday at the Will Rogers Conservatory. And this has become a lightning rod event for our neighborhood in North Oklahoma City because the presence of an oil drilling rig on the south shore of Lake Hefner uh, seriously jeopardizes uh, the quality of our water. Um, I would like to uh, show, just kind of go through this, if, if you will, and, and just let, orient ourselves here. Lake Hefner, if you if you go in there, you travel north on Portland, and it stops right short of the lake. Looks like a bunch of fingers like this, and Hefner Drive is going across like this. Now, the last time this happened, my house is the last street on Portland. They want to drill right there, and then they want to drill right over here, the southeast and the southwest of the intersection of Hefner. They now want to go across the road and over about a tenth of a mile onto a little peninsula that is now surrounds, that is surrounded by water to put this rig. And that's, that's a problem. So that's what's being shown here on this first map. I showed the two previous spots that they wanted to drill and that was stopped. They said it was within 600 feet of the watershed. Couldn't drill, just couldn't do it. And the problem is the new drilling site moves even closer into the lake to where it's surrounded by the lake. Uh, the next piece of paper here is the Lake Hefner Recreation Master Plan that I've uh, cited here on page 31. The Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality made a finding in December 2003 that Lake Hefner to have a high susceptibility of contamination. And a se several steps were taken to preclude water runoff uh, coming into the lake, specifically with Lake Hefner Drive. This is highlighted on page 32. Lake Hefner Drive is designed such that when the water falls, it doesn't go north into the lake. It goes south. The water on the golf course does not run into the lake. This has taken place all the way around. There's a barrier all the way around. This well site, though, just leapfrogs that drive and goes right onto the reservation itself. It's not only within 600 feet of the watershed, it's in the watershed. The next map is on page 33. It shows the elevations at Lake Hefner. And what's interesting here is I've marked with an X the little peninsula that they want to drill, and there's arrows going this direction, which means if that well has any overflow whatsoever, it goes directly into the lake. Next from the report is a talk about the permeability of that land. And that's best shown on this map right here, where it looks like the, the lake has a series of black blotches all the way around it. Those black blotches mean that it's permeable land. That means they would have to line the entire thing with plastic and put rails up to catch any spill. Any spill in that permeability goes into the lake, and this is a problem. Now, here's what I would like to kind of ask the Water Trust. In 1995, I thought this had been taken care of. I didn't realize that somehow the lines are drawn and all these funny little circles and everything as far as to where they could find a little track of land that wasn't within this because 
When I look at this master plan here, I see the lake, I see all the permeable areas, but I see the actual red border line. It says Lake Hefner Reservation. It's a red border all the way around. That new drilling site and the old drilling sites are within the reservation. There should be no consideration, in my opinion, that anything within this red line would ever get a lease from any oil company for any drilling whatsoever. The little amount of money that they could pay the city to benefit us, if you will, uh, is pale compared to the destruction that would happen if this thing blew out. We're talking about tens of thousands of families, businesses. It means I would be going to my kitchen. I couldn't wash my dishes. I can't brush my teeth. I wouldn't be able to wash my clothes. My, all our yards would be going bad. Everybody who has boats in the lake, that's going bad. It just goes on and on, and it's not within the spirit of this recreational plan and trust for any drilling whatsoever to be done on this property. That's it. Thank Any you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next person um, is Jenny Woodruff. Again, now I'd ask you to give your name and your address before you begin, Mark. And I should have advised the first gentleman is the remarks are held to three minutes. I, I, that's plenty of time to talk about it. But, uh, okay. If you <clears throat> well, I'm Jenny Woodruff, and my address is 504 Northwest 32nd Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I personally get my water from Overholzer. Um, but everything he said, <laughs> plus when, when fracking, they, they put in, there are over 500 chemicals, an awful lot of which are known carcinogens, into these wells. And an enormous amount of water that they waste and we've been dealing with a drought for a long, long time. <laughs> and, and, and we would squander our, our drinking water on somebody wanting to put in a, a well that may make that whole reservoir useless. And, and, and a hazard. Um, and what, what comes out of the wells is also an air pollutant. And it's just a bad idea. <laughs> I can't think of any reason why it would be a good idea. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Rupert. I'm Barbara Rupert. My address is 3917 Northwest 70th Street. So that is the last street before South Lake Hefner Drive. Uh, we back on the Green Belt or the Water Trust property that is where the, uh, that includes the pond and the creek or the ditch, whatever you want to call it, where all the runoff goes. And we have become familiar with attempts to develop when, uh, uh, we've lived there since 98, so not as long as uh, Kirk, but, uh, when they tried to build an apartment on our side and learned a lot about what that area is for. So, um, but I'm not even wanting to talk directly about the drilling right at this moment. I think other people are probably going to cover the things I, a lot of my concerns. I'd like to talk about the notice process and this public meeting that is scheduled for Thursday. And I guess I'm going to start out by Ward 1 is so fortunate to have Ed Shadid represent us. Ward 1 contains the vast majority of the Lake Hefner Reservation. And for those who don't know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill you in that, that Ed Shadid is actually the Ward 2 represent, uh, city councilman. Um, the way we found out about it was, uh, I'm going to say, it was social media, it was Facebook. And uh, uh, the reason we found out about it was because my husband had attended the meeting three years ago because there was another opportunity by the attempt by the same group to come in and drill three years ago. And they were sent off and, and said, and I guess they maybe to come up with a better plan, and now they're back and they think they have a better plan. But I don't really remember what happened then. I couldn't go to that meeting. But I do know that this has come out on less than a week's notice for the people who even got notice at all. 
And the way a lot of people in our neighborhood found out about it was because some people took it upon themselves to leaflet. Because certainly the people who live right on the edge, you would think that they would be notified. And bits and pieces are coming out. This is a complicated issue. The, the meeting is scheduled for day after tomorrow. I think I found out about it late on Saturday. The meeting is scheduled for day after tomorrow, yes, in the conservatory at Will Rogers Park, which is a large glass building that is pretty much only appropriate for a fairy tale wedding reception. Weddings have a save the date that is six weeks. I don't necessarily expect that, but this notice and the way this is being handled is just ridiculous, even before you get to the seriousness of the issues. So that's probably close to my time, and that's what I want to say before I go and find out, hopefully, what the project is. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the next one is Kirk Rupert. Hello, my name's Kurt Rupert. I live at 325 Northwest 41st Street. I don't live close to this project, but I feel very strongly about it. I, I completely agree with the comments that have been made up to now. I had no notice of this until this week. Um, I'm com I came over here from work. I mean, I had no idea this was going on. I'm going to be out of town on Thursday, or I would go to that meeting, and so I thought I'll come and talk directly to the board about it. I can't express to you how strongly I object to this board's efforts to reach an agreement with Pedestal Oil Company. I mean, this board is responsible for what is going on here, and this board can stop it. And I think this board needs to take a step back and stop this process. I think if people in the city of Oklahoma City knew what was going on here and that this board was trying to reach an agreement to achieve some financial benefit, uh, and I, that's the only thing I can come up with as a reason why the board would begin to try and reach an agreement to begin with. I mean, it's got to be that you guys want to make some money off the deal. Um, and, I, and I understand. I, I, I tell you what, I had made up my mind I wasn't going to respond. But I'm going to respond to an allegation that you think me or anybody. No, no, not personally. No, of course not. Done this to make money. No, no, and I wasn't making that That's allegation. That's what you said. That's exactly. No, that isn't what I said. Well, we could play the the city of Oklahoma City. Okay, if that makes you feel better. But I, I resent that very much. Well, and I, and I and I will say that to the extent you took it that I was saying that you personally benefited from it, I, I apologize because that is not what I intended to say. But I do think that the city of Oklahoma. I mean. What is the basis? Why do you need to reach this agreement? I mean, you all are the ones in the negotiations. You are the ones that have directed the city attorney to go and reach an agreement with Pedestal Oil Company. Why? Can you answer that? Or you won't I answer that? I haven't been involved in any negotiating with anybody. I understand you haven't. You directed the city. You directed the – I called you want Lisa answer, Hubble you want earlier answer, today. You want to talk. I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. I have not been I have not been contacted by anyone, nor do I think anyone else on this trust has been contacted by anyone. An unsolicited proposal was received by the staff. They they looked at the proposal and set a hearing on it and notified us. Well, I got the notice of the hearing the same date you did. Okay. I didn't have anything to do with that. And I resent that kind of that somehow personally someone here is trying to pull something over on somebody. You know, it's going to be a public meeting. Obviously, the public meeting notice worked or you wouldn't be here. I mean, that's what the meeting's for. We're, I'm glad to listen to you, but I... I'm okay, well, I talked to Lisa Hubble earlier today, and she told me that the board had directed the legal counsel of the city of Oklahoma City to enter into an, a negotiation over an agreement with Pedestal, and that that agreement would... And my understanding is there was already a draft agreement reached, that I couldn't, couldn't get a copy of the draft agreement because this is what she told me, so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I couldn't let's get a copy be, of the draft Let's be real clear about what, 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 what's, what's happening here. We've had an unsolicited proposal that came in. Staff thought we should get some input into it and set a public hearing to, to, to get some input into it. We've got, there, there's going to be a lot of process. This is going to come back before this trust at least once, if not a couple of times. It's going to have to go to the city council. We're not short on process around here, sir. We have a lot of process that we do with the city of Oklahoma City, and this is going to be part of it. But having public input at a, and having a public meeting is not a wrong thing to do as we start out the process. I haven't made up my decision. You know why I haven't made any decision? Because I don't have any information. I don't have any information to make a decision at this point in time. We're going to weigh the facts and see what, what comes on the, down the line. 
But, you know, up, because you're upset, because it's, you know, we, we had a meeting the week before Christmas, we're not trying to run it, railroad anything through. You can't do it the next week because it's Christmas. You can't do it the week after that because it's, it's New Year's. I mean, we're just trying to get a, uh, to start the process, start the discussion. Okay, I was told by Lisa Hubble that she thought that the agreement would be presented to you. In other words, the, the agreement that had been reached with, in other words, and I understand when you reach an agreement that it still has to be approved, it has to be approved by the I board, it has to be approved by the city council, I understand that, but that the agreement that's being negotiated would be presented to you all on June, I'm sorry, January the 6th or January the 20th. And that's not a lot of time, I mean, between here and there, so I'm sorry, I am going to make my comments, and I, I apologize, I'm not trying to offend anybody, I'm not trying to create animosity between you all and, I mean, I'm a citizen of the city of Oklahoma City. I mean, I hope, and I think I do believe you all, you know, serve us. I mean, that's, that's your, well, we your want place. Well, we want your input. Right, we want and to I'm trying to give it to you. as we go forward. Okay, and I'll try and give it to you. I uh, will tell you that I think that whatever the, the benefit that would be achieved from reaching an agreement with Pedestal here is far outweighed by the cost to the recreational use alone of the of the trail system out there and i do think that whatever they attempt to do in terms of mitigating you know the risk mitigating the risk of environmental issues mitigating uh, any kind of interruption to the trail system around is 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 not worth it i mean in other words this is a bad bad decision and i understand that you all are in the preliminary stages of it i appreciate that I also appreciate that I couldn't go to the meeting on Thursday and I felt like I needed to come here sure. and tell you all, and I don't think that I'm alone here, incidentally. I mean, I've talked to many, many people that I interact with on a daily basis, and I haven't, to a person, I've not talked to anyone who thinks this is a good idea. So that'll be my comment. Great. Thank you. Signed up to speak is uh, Troy Iker. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, the drilling as well. Uh, just some comments. Um, uh, that is the main source of drinking water. Uh, possible contaminations. What are the alternative plans if it is contaminated? Um, heavy equipment being in there to do the installation deterioration of the roads, uh, disturbance of all the wildlife in the trails. Um, three, there is, it will be an eyesore for all the people that walk the trails, jog the trails, have picnics, do all kinds of activities out there. Um, and uh, as an example, oil spills, Exxon Valdez, BP Halliburton, uh, and also the property values decrease. Thank you. Appreciate your time. I don't think there are any there are any other matters on the agenda. I have a motion to adjourn. Okay.